Welcome everyone that's just joining us for the booster session with Carrie Sandilands. My name is Kate Evans. I am a prevention and education consultant with Manitoba Shared Health, Mental Health and Addiction Services. The staff wellness and health booster sessions, um, and especially today's session, is about building a sense of belonging within virtual teams. And I can attest to, and so will Carrie be able to, that we have struggled all morning to make sure that this platform is good to go for you all. Um, in recent years, many of us have faced uh, workplace, home and social life adjustments, which <laughs> can be overwhelming. Again, we'll attest to that from uh, how we started our day together. Uh, so to support health system workers, mental health and addictions, Shared Health has organized staff wellness and health booster sessions featuring timely topics like stress management, self-care. And it's these sessions are meant to be designed to fit into our busy schedules with recorded sessions available as streaming video on demand. So for anyone who wishes to restream this um, session today, it will be available afterwards, um, as well as some other dates for the session. Today's session is exploring practical strategies for cultivating a sense of belonging within virtual teams. As remote work has become the norm, creating a cohesive and connected team culture has become crucial on the virtual platforms. So this session with Carrie is delving into the challenges of virtual collaboration and provides actionable insights on fostering inclusivity, communication, and shared identity. From leveraging technology to promoting open dialogue, attendees today should be able to gain valuable tips on ways of promoting stronger senses of belonging, ultimately enhancing team cohesion in the virtual workspace. <clears throat> so our presenter today, Carrie Sandilands, is an experience coordinator with Manitoba's Blue Cross Employee Assistance Program, otherwise many of us know as EAP. With an educational background in social work, Carrie's career has extended over several areas, including community support services, child and family services, clinical mental health, and community crisis services. Carrie has worked within Manitoba Blue Cross Employee Assistance Program since 2019, fulfilling various roles with the most current being clinical services coordinator. Carrie oversees the day-to-day -day clinical operations of the EAP and enjoys connecting with the large network of providers and organizations who have EAP benefits with the Manitoba Blue Cross. Thank you so much for being with us today, Carrie, and all of you for joining us. I'm going to turn my microphone off now and maybe my camera too, so that you can enjoy um, Carrie's presentation. Oh, and just a note, if anyone has questions going through the session, please put them into the question box on your platform. And I will share those with Sherry at uh, Sherry with Carrie at the end of Carrie's presentation. Thanks again, Carrie. Take over. All right. Thank you so much, Kate. So as Kate just spoke to, the past few years have brought enormous challenge and changes. New ways of working, we've seen distance from our coworkers, but it's also created a lot of new opportunities for the ways that we do business. And for some, this is certainly a welcome change. But for others, there may be a wide array of challenges associated with that. In particular, one that we hear quite often is that um, loss of connection, and that's a common issue. We're losing connections with our colleagues and various aspects of our work. So it is important to highlight um, that there are varying perspectives and feelings towards remote work. And some people might actually not have the ability to work remotely given their role, for example, maybe uh, frontline staff in healthcare. And this can create some divides. So this divide, of course, is a much larger conversation. Um, but for the purpose of today's workshop, we're just going to focus solely on the challenges of working amongst a remote work group and building or strengthening that sense of belonging. So we'll take a look at our agenda for a very short time here together today. The presentation in its entirety should wrap up by, I would say, 
1230, 1240, or 1240 at the latest. Um, but within this, we're gonna explore a few common challenges related to virtual work. We're gonna look at some elements that create a sense of belonging. And as we go through, I'd really like for each of you to sort of take that moment and reflect on your own personal experience and what it feels like for you working remotely. And perhaps make some mental notes for yourself of gaps that you identify or things that seem to be missing. This could be something you miss just from physically being amongst your colleagues or your work group or day-to-day -day challenges that you face. Kate mentioned uh, her and I had quite the morning trying to get this technology sorted out. So definitely no stranger to the day-to-day -day tech issues. Um, next, we'll get into some actionable tips and we'll take a look at some tools that maybe you and your team um, can explore and work together to sort of, sort of um, build and strengthen that connection. And lastly, we're gonna discuss um, some strategies that might be helpful in evaluating and then monitoring the progress related to any changes that you and your team may decide to implement. So as we know, there's things that come up every day, but there's also more larger issue um, impacts, whether that be to the team or to individual employees. So I'd like to start by getting a sense from this group here today as to how you're feeling and what challenges you might face with respect to working remotely. Um, your responses will be read out by Kate, um, so she'll do so as they come in, but she won't include your name, of course, so the responses will be anonymous and you're free to sort of share whatever comes to mind. Um, I can start by providing a bit of an example um, my role here at Manitoba Blue Cross doesn't lend itself well to remote work, but um, one of the teams that I manage does have aspects of remote work. So there's challenges in that too from a manager side as well as from an employee side. And it's very common to feel isolated, to feel sort of detached and removed. I can speak to this uh, through COVID. Of course, just like everyone else, we were all forced to work from home. And at first it was sort of fun. And you know, it's different and new, but I quickly recognized for myself as an extrovert that I was very much missing that um, in-person face-to-face contact. I was really missing, you know, those casual conversations walking into the building or at the water cooler, those types of things. So it's very normal to sort of experience that sense of detachment and longing for, for your colleagues when you are only able to communicate virtually, which can be challenging. So I'd like to invite anyone in the group if you'd like to share what your experience is like or has been like in the past, it would be great to hear. And then Kate, you can just let me know if there's any responses there. Yeah, um, one um, common experience I am learning and also can um, certainly attest to is the ability to check in with people adequately. So, you know, suddenly maybe somebody isn't on their camera, they're not listening, or you're just not sure, are they okay? Are they taking the information that's being shared um, in a way that's um, that's healthy and safe? And, and how to manage that while still engaging with the larger audience in a professional capacity virtually, if you mm -hmm. wanna speak to that. Thanks, Carrie. Yeah, absolutely. So more so, I'm just looking for participants to share. Um, so those are a lot of things that we will cover throughout the presentation. But I was hoping if participants were interested in sort of sharing their experience. But what we'll do is maybe leave that as a think independently, and maybe we can share a bit later. If there are no um, messages in the chat, that is. I can't see the chat, unfortunately. That sounds perfect, Carrie. I'm not seeing messages at the moment, and I'll, okay. I'll keep track of them as we go. Thank you. Sounds good, thank you. Okay, so we'll move right along here. So we'll start by talking about the five pillars of belonging and how that relates to the virtual challenge. Um, there's many different variations to the five pillars. So you may have seen different sort of keywords on this, um, but ultimately the concept of belonging is an experience of connection, security and community. So it's helpful to break this down and it's gonna give us a better sense and understanding of what aspects contribute to a sense of belonging. So we'll start here with safety, creating a sense of psychological safety, whether that be in a virtual environment or a physical environment, of course, um, can be challenging. But speaking specific to the virtual environment, you're losing that physical presence. Um, without team members right there with you, we may feel hesitant to express ourselves virtually um, openly. 
right? So maybe out of concern for what we're gonna share might be misinterpreted or judged. I recently actually heard the term keyboard warrior to describe some people who let's say are maybe a little more aggressive behind the keyboard than they would be during a face-to-face -face interaction. So thinking of that sort of idea, it makes sense for people to really veer on the side of caution in their online interactions. Um, but this does of course have an impact on our connection within our working group. And there certainly is an online etiquette um, and it's important for all of us to be mindful of this in our online interactions because without any context, our communication may be perceived negatively. And of course, not everyone is aware of the etiquette. So something for us, a good reminder for us all moving forward. In looking at trust, building trust is, is far more difficult when interactions are limited to virtual platforms. Virtually, we're gonna lose those nonverbal cues, those spontaneous social interactions, which contribute significantly when we're building trust with others. And I read an interesting article recently in Psychology Today, and they suggested that 55% of communication is transmitted through body language, and that 7% is actually only transmitted through spoken words. So while you may gain a bit of that back through video, there's certainly some impairment to the trust building aspect of that. Uh, con connection. So when we're establishing and maintaining personal connections among team members, it can be a lot harder when our communication is relying heavily on digital tools. And again, that face-to-face -face interaction can naturally decrease elements of personal bonding, which is going to result, um, oh, pardon me, which result is going to affect the cohesion within a team. Inclusion. Virtual working groups may also face challenges in ensuring everyone feels included. For example, new employees. Um, for anyone here today who's entered into a remote work position um, and is brand new to the role, I salute you. It's another level of challenge within starting into a new role to have to do it working remotely. And, you know, with that said, technology is great and virtual communication tools have come a long way. When I think back years ago, we didn't have nearly what we have, of course, today. Um, when I think about COVID and I go back to that, I kind of noticed within myself, like I tended to almost take a step back and isolate myself, whether it be in a meeting or anything online out of fear I was gonna interrupt someone because it's just a whole new world of doing things and it's challenging and that really sort of hindered my own inclusion. So kind of good to think about those things and what your experience has been like that in order to think about how we can create better space for other people. So looking at purpose, and depending on your role, it can be really challenging to clarify and reinforce the team's purpose in a virtual setting. You're missing that sort of aspect of physical presence that might result in team members feeling detached from broader goals, which will be another domino effect, of course, impacting motivation and engagement. So next, we're gonna take a look at how both managers and staff can foster and reinforce belonging and I wanna highlight that addressing these types of challenges can certainly be a challenge in itself, um, but it's really important and spoiler alert, it starts with just taking a look at your own unique work, work group and your own unique self and how you're feeling at that time and within that group. So creating positive change isn't an easy thing to do, right? And it not only involves intentional effort from all levels of staff within your work group, even potentially your organization, but it requires regular monitoring and follow up on that. So as I mentioned earlier, a great place to start is just to assess uh, where things are at currently. And that's gonna help you identify any gaps or areas that might need some improvement. And this is also, of course, gonna provide a baseline. So you can refer back to it at a later time in order to sort of monitor and reevaluate where things are at and changes or tweaks that may need to be made. So this assessment, shall we call it, can be done in various ways. And I'll highlight some measures for both managers and employees that they can use and take a look at. So managers may consider taking a look at performance metrics. So maybe that's looking at key performance indicators, KPIs, as this might identify any declining trends in individual employee productivity, um, the quality of their work or efficiency of their work, which could shed some light on how they're managing as an individual, but also how they're managing as an employee within their team. Another thing managers might wanna take a look at might be absenteeism rates and pay attention to any changes in the overall employee morale. 
you may want to consider evaluating the quality and frequency of communication within the team, as well as the manager's communication uh, with the team. And looking at these things is going to help in assessing if there's any communication breakdowns or misunderstandings impacting the team members or the team as a whole. Team collaboration. So take a look out at how effectively the team are working together. Are you noticing that conflicts are frequently arising? Are there any obvious cliques, uh, outliers? Looking at this may also influence how work's being assigned. So this can help to ensure that the entire team is being in, engaged as opposed to you know, the same individuals or this same couple of people working together on a project each time. And uh, save the best for last here, ask. So this one's my favorite and just asking people is an invaluable tool. There's no better place um, to determine how things are going for people than to just ask them directly. And this can be done in many ways, but a great option might be to conduct an anonymous survey. Doing so um, anonymously is gonna provide that safe and secure space for people to be honest in their responses, and that's the important part. But apart from an anonymous survey, um, there's a lot of value in connecting one-on-one -on -one with staff for informal discussions and just really paying attention to any reoccurring themes or concerns that are raised. As for individual staff and employees, of course, there's tons of things too that can be taken on to assist in promoting an inclusive, inclusive work group. An important place here to start, um, and I spoke to this earlier, but for individuals, just to take an honest look at your own situation and your own feelings, reflecting on your own personal job satisfaction and sense of belonging within your team and in general. You may want to think about what might be missing for you and what could be impacting your sense of belonging or inclusion. Some things you might want to think about um, may be, be around communication. So do you feel the current level or method of communication within your work group is supporting an inclusive work environment? Are there any barriers that are hindering effective communication? And then you may also want to think about collaboration. So are there any obstacles in working together towards a common goal? And then another more individualistic thing to do and think about is um, your own personal stress levels and how your personal stress may be impacting your own engagement within the team. Maybe exploring whether the team's um, dynamics are contributing to that stress or if your team perhaps is an avenue of support. So just identifying that. The importance here is just to be you know, honest with yourself and when you're feeling safe to do so, to be honest with others. And this can't be stressed enough because in order for change to occur, the issues or the barriers need to be identified or brought forward so that any missing pieces um, that support the positive change can be addressed. We spend most of our time working um, and work should be enjoyable and can be enjoyable even, even remotely. Okay, so we'll look at some practical tips to foster a sense of belonging. Um, and of course, this type of culture is essential and you can create an environment like those water cooler chats, but just in a different way. So we'll look at some practical tips to strengthen that connection. So practical tip number one is to use clear and frequent communication. Of course, I probably sound like a broken record by now talking about communication, but where possible, you know, utilize video calls as opposed to sending those multiple emails just as a means of creating <clears throat> and increasing that face-to-face -face interaction, which will help strengthen connections. You may, you know, at some point we recognize that there needs to be paper trails for things, but perhaps someone within that conversation is willing to put together a summary and, and send it to whoever needs to see it. But of course, yes, we're working, but similar to when you're in an office or a, a common workspace, not all interactions are work related. So at the beginning of a video call, take a few minutes to chat before you're diving into business. And it may be helpful as a group too to kind of discuss and establish your own communication etiquette guidelines. So as an example of this, creating a guideline that during virtual meetings, everyone has their cameras on or their mics are on because there's nothing worse than trying to engage in a meeting where all you see is yourself and it just feels awkward for the person with their camera on. I know I've been there myself and it's sort of like, do I turn my camera off? Do I leave it on? So just kind of thinking about that etiquette and as your group, maybe as a group, it's a rule that everyone has their cameras off. So whatever works 
for you, just as long as it's consistent and no one's kind of feeling excluded. Another great option is maybe to create an informal communication channel. So depending on the platform that you use, I know with Microsoft Teams, a lot of people sort of just establish um, chat groups specific for these informal conversations. So the point here is to be intentional about engaging in these informal chats and just really have fun with it. Uh, practical tip number two, regular check-ins and this will be both formal and informal. So we'll start with some formal examples. This might look like a manager scheduling regular one-to-one -one and team check-ins to discuss work-related matters. And of course, these meetings are intended to be business-related, but it can be really helpful and beneficial to create that time and that space again to provide a platform for staff to share personal or work-related concerns or even weekend updates, anything else that's a hot topic just to have some casual conversation and get to know one another. Another thought um, where possible, recognizing it's not always possible, might be to organize an in-person meeting every quarter as opposed to a virtual meeting. And this sort of just spices it up and um, maybe you make the quarterly meeting a potluck. There's always a nice way to switch it up and add some fun and, and change for, for the work group and for colleagues. I find it's really funny. You know, you've worked virtually with some people for a significant amount of time and you have this preconceived notion in your head how tall they are or what their style's like that type of thing and then you meet them in person and it's never at all what you envision so it's always kind of fun to get together in person as a group when you can um, just an example is some informal um, things you can do it might be as colleagues scheduling virtual coffee breaks to create some time for that non-work related discussion and simply just spend time hanging um, out together online, just getting to know one another, similar to what you would do in a break room or the lunch room, that type of thing. Setting these um, informal virtual meetings is just a really great way to create space for one another and again, build that cohesion. So you can also do it deliberately by setting excite, uh, meetings to share exciting news or to celebrate and acknowledge each other whether that be maybe birthdays or work anniversaries or other big life events. And then lastly, a really important thing we should do is check in on one another. So if you notice someone within your work group is less, less interactive or is just seemingly disengaged, it's really nice and, and really important to take that time just to personally check in with them. And practical tip number three here. So establish regular virtual team building activities. I can imagine some people may roll their eyes at even the thought of a team building activity, but I'm definitely here to tell you that they're not all cringy and can actually not only be a lot of fun, but it's a really great way to build connection. Nowadays, I mean, there's so many of these different types of virtual group games. A quick Google search and you can find a ton of these types of platforms. There's anything from Pictionary on Zoom, I think it is, or one called Coworker Feud, which is similar to Family Feud, of course. And there's also ongoing virtual team building games. Uh, our department uses one called Quiz Breaker. And it's so easy in that every Monday, my team and I each receive an email link and it contains three or so questions. Um, and essentially you just guess who of your colleagues provided the response. So it's not at all time consuming, yet it's a really, really good way for us to learn more about each other and engage in a few minutes of entertainment at any point um, in a day or within that week that suits us. And just as a final idea here, maybe incorporating more lunch and learns um, like today, but specific to the work that your group does, just to engage in that collaborative learning and development um, specific to your area of work. There are many, many um, ways to engage with, with the group suitable to you know, everyone, regardless of location, accessibility, um, language, diversity, there's something out there for everyone. So I do encourage you to take a look. So looking at some key takeaways um, from today is just pri prioritize communication. So again, whether that's formal or informal, make time to interact just as you would in a physical setting and try to keep an open mind and, and have fun exploring some of these new ways to, to interact and engage with your colleagues in this virtual world. Embrace diversity. So striving to create a place where everyone feels supported, connected and empowered just to be their authentic selves. 
Sometimes we do certainly have to agree to disagree, but there is a ton of value working amongst a group of differing perspectives. And the challenge usually is just keeping an open mind to view things a bit differently. And final takeaway here is inclusion's a journey, not a destination. So building and maintaining a sense of belonging is a fluid process because on any given day, each of us are gonna vary in what we bring to the table, both professionally and personally. Like even if things for the most part are going seemingly well, we can always do better. So remember that creating a sense of belonging for everyone is not a checkbox to be ticked off. But this is an ongoing commitment to creating a better and overall environment for everyone. Just because you know we're feeling comfortable does not mean that everyone is. So it's important to make a point of creating space for others, and especially those who tend to be less engaged. Then, um, and you know, as we wrap up our time together, I just thought it'd be fun to show a short little video, and then we can open up for questions and comments after. I'm just gonna have to figure out this video again. Let's see. Is that good on your end, Kate? I see it starting to load. You're doing brilliantly, wow. Really well done, Carrie, for figuring that out on the fly. <laughs> I was able to see and hear that video clearly. Hopefully everyone else was. And okay. we apologize for not reminding you to turn your volume down if any of you found it a bit loud. But <laughs> <laughs> it is a fun video. Are you back to the regular scheduled programming on your end? Is that what you're seeing? I think so, but also um, there's a few themes from what's been shared in the chat um, since you first invited folks and it took a while for me to be able to access that, but um, <laughs> if only I could hear other people laughing, I'm pretty sure that um, that we were chuckling about what we saw there. Um, so some people, a lot of people shared about, you know, feeling lonely. Uh, feeling disconnected and finding ways to form those connections. So I think you spoke to the um, importance of prioritizing the check-in chat, or I liked how you mentioned some of the um, the games that you can play to facilitate team building, because that was certainly mentioned a lot in the chat, how to do those things um, as well virtually as we would in person and have less emails to respond to and more discussion taking place. So a lot of people feeling a loss at the opportunity for engaging discussion in meetings and um, sessions uh, virtually compared to in person. I'll leave it to you to speak a little bit more to that if you wish, Carrie. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a common one, right? It's like, I would like to be more engaged or I'd like my work group to be more cohesive and engaged, but we're so busy, we have no time. Um, that's where creating that space and being intentional about it, prioritizing exactly that. Um, this is an important part of, of your role, right? It's getting together, it's being able to work well together. And a lot of working well together, being collaborative, 
sort of starts with these basic skills of of creating space and time to get to know one another because you're going to work better with those you're well connected to so that's an important part and as a group i think it's important to come you know in your next meeting have a discussion about how can we create space for more of these things recognizing you're not going to be able to take a day a week for team building but perhaps how could we insert small meaningful little bits throughout whether it's the work week or the work month and what that might look like for your work group very important thanks we're getting more uh, conversation in the chat so thanks all of you that are um, able to chime in there um, we've got um, somebody mentioning that it's important to be able to acknowledge that we may we might want to connect with our work colleagues but it isn't always um, we're not always comfortable doing so with um, maybe the leadership so do you feel like there's an important way to make time for work peer connections in addition to those that include managers I don't know if I'm understanding it properly. Um, like as a leader, it's challenging. Are you reading it that way, Kate? I, I think it's about uh, connecting with peers and less, um, maybe feeling less comfortable to do so while managers or supervisors are present on, on the team chat or call or session or meeting. So mm -hmm. ways to um, enable and encourage our peers to be able to connect with one another um, outside of, of those platforms, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And that's for creating these informal chats. So you would have your work related chat groups or whatever that looks like and creating space just for employees. But with that said, it's important to engage leaders too, right? Because they're not at in some level, it's nice for them to be engaged with their staff as well. Those relationships are just as important. So I think as a work group, there's a lot of benefit in having that conversation. What do we want this to look like? Um, does leadership want to be included if we're looking at team building or informal chats, right? And having that conversation specific to your work group and, and the makeup of that group and coming together and, and mapping that out. How does that fit for us and what works best for everyone? Because perhaps, you know, it, it would be natural to maybe not engage at the same level with a colleague with your, with your leader present. So creating sort of an avenue for everything. Um, leadership interactions and then just colleagues because i'm sure there's some joking around that goes on that maybe you don't want your leader to hear very normal um so just creating what you need and what's going to work best for your group is important somebody's asking thanks carrie somebody's asking for you to repeat the name of the game that you do every monday morning for those that are, are looking for those types of ways to connect yeah quiz breaker highly recommend it comes with, I think, um, a set of standard questions, but it also has the ability, you can go in and create your own questions. So it's a lot of fun. There's far more sort of aspects to it and other things you can do. We use it at sort of the basic level around here, but um, I would encourage you to explore it because it is a lot of fun and creates good conversation, both in person and on our chat platform. Absolutely. Uh, we're also um, having uh, folks chiming in and saying that, you know, doing this actually takes time and we have more work to do and less time. So there's always that balance to um, to be mindful of for mm -hmm. folks that are struggling with the, the, with the limited time we have and, and much more work to do. So just acknowledging that balance. Um, yeah. And well, I'll just make a quick comment to yeah. that, too. Um, I mean, we feel that here we see that across many of the groups that we work with. I think we're just in a time in this world where everything is just busy busy right for whatever reason um but creating space in terms of having lunch together right you're going to eat at some point so maybe instead of scrolling through your emails um during that time if you're not getting up from your desk invite a colleague to meet you virtually and have your lunch together and find time sort of for these little things that way just where you could squeak it in So for those of you that were asking, I've, I've tried to share it in the chat directly to you. And I'm also trying to share the link for the video that Carrie um, showcased for us, for those of you that weren't able to pick up on the audio. Sorry about that. Um, and again, uh, someone is asking, Carrie, if you can recommend if leadership doesn't support these efforts um, to increase connection. And I think you've spoken to that about <laughs> organizing lunch dates, but any other suggestions for people eager um, to find ways to connect with their colleagues, especially for new staff? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's a that's a challenging one because I did, you know, that's I purposely put um steps that managers can take to to support the sense of belonging and inclusion within their work groups because it does take buy-in from all levels for a full change or full inclusion sort of revamp to be successful. Um, but again, it, if there isn't the support, maybe that's not something that can be done deliberately during work time. But again, it's having casual conversations um, within your meetings before you dive into work-related stuff or back to the lunches, um, finding ways that works for you and having a conversation with leadership and explaining, you know, expressing to them how it's important and how staff are feeling on their own. So if at home you're feeling isolated, you're feeling lonely, and this is what you need to feel good when you come, come to work, to engage in your work, it's important for them to recognize this because when you look at the increase in absenteeism rates, when staff aren't doing well, um, it increases, right? So the impact to the work um, is there and it's important for, for leaders to recognize that as well. And that can be tough to have that conversation. Um, again, if you have the opportunity during a team meeting to bring that up and express your feelings, if you don't, perhaps there is another person in the organization that you can consult with of the best way to bring this forward. Every, every work group and organization site is gonna be very different. So finding who you can talk to and, and how you can get your message across to come to some sort of resolution, there'll be benefit there. Absolutely, thank you so much, Carrie. If it's okay, I'll just share just a couple more questions um, to give people the chance to catch up with themselves or and you, and you as well for your lunch. Um, sorry, I've just lost the question I was going to ask you. Um, <laughs> I'm multitasking here and uh, this is another <laughs> challenge of um, doing things virtually, trying to answer people in the back chat and also uh, keep moderating um, for our presenter. Um, so someone's mentioning that their leadership team created a group chat on their phones um, as a way to share information there, but often they are joking or poking fun at each other and keeping it light, which contributes to lots of laughs, even though at the same time they are working hard. So a way, a way for folks. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. Um, and I hope that I'm getting to folks that have answer, asked some questions that maybe we haven't spoken to um, in, in the larger group here. Oh, someone is again looking um, at ways to connect um, more with their and support their work colleagues uh, work, while working remotely. And just one more question I'm going to bring up if that's okay. Of course. And oh yes, this is again for new employees. Um, mm. So it, it's a challenge to get to know the new people that they're working with and um, to, to take the initiative uh, as a new person, it can be also daunting. So any further recommendations for being able to do that effectively? Yeah, and that's a hard one. Um, I've not myself been in this situation, but I certainly can appreciate the challenge there. You know, I think it depends on their comfortability and how vulnerable they're willing to make themselves, but maybe that's creating sort of a lunch and learn about me. Right, and welcoming people to join you and sharing about yourself. Um, it could be you send out an email, at, like a short bio, letting them know sort of this is who I am, this is who is now on your team, and opening it up if anyone has questions or wants to know more about you, whether that be you know as much as you're willing to share personally or your professional experience. But sort of it takes an aspect of vulnerability for sure to put yourself out there and and be willing to share and engage on your end. And it's unfortunate if people aren't coming to you, but again, right, this digital world, it's almost out of sight, out of mind sometimes, and we forget that, oh wait, we still have to check in on people or welcome them just in different ways. Absolutely, thanks again, Carrie. Lots of kudos uh, for your session, for this information. Um, for those of you, those people that weren't able to make it here or those of you that wish to share this information, please know that the recording is going to be uploaded and that it's going to be rebroadcast, I believe on Friday afternoon as well as Sunday and some dates next week. 
visit the uh, mental health and addictions um, booster session learning link on the website and or the wellness hub uh, for folks that want to um, repeat this broadcast or reaccess it or share it with others. Thank you all for being here and thanks again so much to you, Carrie, for <laughs> managing to present on our virtual <laughs> platform <laughs> as oh, well thank as you, you for having me. Very, very interesting session. Thanks again for, for presenting. Take care, everyone, and hope to see you again in more of these sessions as we um, as we continue to present them. Great. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.